Hello everyone, and welcome back to my top 5 weapon series from Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Today we'll be talking about a weapon that I think is a little underappreciated, the Lance. The Lance has always been a pretty underplayed weapon, and I can see why, it's got a very simple moveset. However, in Iceborne, with the new additions of the guard, parry, counterattack moves, as well as the always reliable evade lancing style, it's one of the best ways to just stick to a monster and do damage without taking any yourself, and it's very consistent. Starting off with our list, number 5, the Yingaruga Lance, Incessant Wolf, with a very good attack of 621, purple sharpness with enough handicraft, insanely high 25% affinity that I think is actually the highest among all lances, 240 poison plus a level 3 slot, the Incessant Wolf is great for getting 100% affinity and performs well against any monster thanks to the poison element and decent raw. If you like critting on every attack, this lance is for you. Moving on to our number 4 slot, the Raging Bracadios Lance, the Lightbreak Lance. Some of you may be a little surprised to see a Lightbreak weapon so low on the list relatively speaking after I've rated them very highly in previous videos. It's still an absolutely excellent weapon with a staggeringly huge draw of 690 and blast element as well as the level 4 and level 3 slot to accompany it, but that short bar of purple sharpness makes it a little bit annoying to use, especially since the Lance wants to mostly continue evading and guarding as opposed to sheathing the weapon and sharpening your healing. Overall, still a great weapon and very powerful, but you'll definitely want to get some razor sharp in your build. Number 3 is the Furious Rajang Lance, the Demon Lord Rajang. With a very high 667 attack, a long bar of purple sharpness that can be extended further with handicraft, plus 15% affinity and 360 thunder element, this lance is impressive. The lance has always been pretty good about applying elemental damage, and there are a good number of thunder weak monsters in the late game. The affinity being so good is really nice for your build flexibility, and that long sharpness really sells it for me. Number 2 is the Alatreon or Alatreon Lance, the Alatreon Gleam. 644 raw is definitely top tier, and look at that incredible purple sharpness. It's kind of a Alatreon signature move to have a long bar of purple, but on the Lance this is especially nice because you never have to sheath. 660 Dragon element is very high, and as I mentioned before, the Lance is great at applying it, and the two level 2 slots help you get your guard up or evade window under your set. Number one on the list is the Fatalis Lance, called the True Fatalis Lance. Great naming, Capcom. I'd like to take a brief second here to talk about Fatalis weapons a little bit. So some Fatalis weapons have negative 30% affinity, while others have negative 20% affinity. I think that there is sometimes an argument that can be made that the negative 30% affinity Fatalis weapons are not as good for general play as counterparts within their own weapon class, just because of how difficult it is to fit the crit skills in that you need to do consistent damage, while still fitting in all the skills that your weapon class might need. Luckily, the Fatalis Lance has negative 20% Divinity, so we don't need to worry about it. The 851 raw damage is insane and is over 100 points higher than the next viable lance, while also possessing natural purple that can go to a long bar of purple using handicraft, a little bit of dragon element, high elder seal, and two coveted level 4 slots. Overall, this lance is absolutely incredible and is best in class by a long shot. As usual, I do have a couple of honorable mentions here. My first one is the Shara Ishvalda Lance, the Unblinking Gatekeeper. This one makes the cut because it's really the only viable non-elemental boost lance. You could go with a lower rarity one for augments, but I like the high base attack of the Unblinking Gatekeeper of 644, plus the decent bar of purple sharpness that you get with maxed out handicraft. In my opinion, if you're trying to use non-elemental boost on the lance, this is your best bet. My other honorable mention is an interesting one. It's actually the workshop weapon, Shining Star Lance. 598 attack, which is acceptable, and only white sharpness. You wonder why is this lance even on the list? Well, believe it or not, this lance is actually the only craftable paralysis lance that does not require free element or awakening. 300 paralysis is actually quite a lot on a weapon that can hit as often and as consistently as the lance, so even in multiplayer you can get 2 to 3 paralysis off if you know what you're doing. Having near exclusive access to the ability to paralyze on a lance makes this one of the better multiplayer support lances using the provoke jewel and paralysis attack. Your team will thank you. And that's it for my top 5 favorite lances in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Let me know which ones you think are the best or worst in the comments below. Thanks for watching!